Hi and welcome! In this video, I will show you how I take a game at a technical prototype state and turn it into a design prototype. The game is called Witches of the Flow and has been something I had wanted to work on for a long, long time. Thanks to Unity sponsoring this video, I finally got the chance to do so. It's somewhat of an action puzzler. One day, your town gets attacked by strange demons and a voice tells you to grab a magic crystal, turning you into a magical person. You fight demons by destroying matching colored blocks on a grid, and if the area you destroy is big enough, the enemy will take damage. It's a simple premise, but I remember playing games like this for hours on end as a child and I dearly wanted to create my own. For this, I'll be using some of my favorite assets. The majority of these do not add art or design on their own, but give very useful toolboxes to craft my desired look and feel of the game. The technical prototype state is usually a starting point for every project of mine. While building it, I check if I can reasonably create the game's most important systems with the skills I currently have when it comes to programming. They usually have very rough designs. I guess everybody knows this. The next step is if I can turn this initial idea into a minimum viable prototype when it comes to the look. For most projects, I have a rough idea how I want it to look and I need to check if I have all the tools available to me to get there. Once this prototype stage is done, I start adding features and expand on systems and do stuff like squashing bugs. My favorite assets come in roughly three categories and over the course of this video I will show you how, why and where I utilize them in the workflow. Plus, once this video goes live, they will be on sale for 50% off in Unity's second week of summer sale. So if something grabs your interest, you'll find the links to them in the video description. First are the assets helping me in the editor. Those are Editor Console Pro, Rainbow Hierarchy and Folders, as well as Odin Inspector. The next group of assets are all UI related. The Ultimate Clean Graphical User Interface, Dialog System, Text Animator, i2 Localization, Modern Procedural UI Kit and UI Particle Image. Dialog System is a bit dependent on the project I tackle, but for this it's necessary. The last group are Game Feel Assets, Feel and Choreographer. One thing all these assets have in common is, they work very well out of the box and usually offer very user-friendly interfaces to work with them and craft whatever I'm trying to create. Plus, each has a very good documentation. Editor Console Pro ranks high up in my list of all-time favorites and I think it was one of the first assets I bought. It replaces the built-in console and gives a lot more info on anything that would be printed to it. Super useful! Also, it shows me the specific lines of code that got executed to reach that error, which has made debugging a lot easier for me in a ton of cases. The first issue I need to tackle once the first scripts and files come in is cleaning up the project folder as well as the hierarchy. And of course, folders come in super handy for this. I actually start by creating a new project folder in which I sort my own files, so my folder structure won't be littered by any asset folders I might have to import going forward. Rainbow Folders is among the first installs in every project. As soon as it's installed, a simple Alt-Left click on the folder icon pops out a tiny window in which I can set colors and icons. Find a color scheme you can stick to across projects and it will speed up your workflow a lot. Rainbow Folders has a sister asset as well, Rainbow Hierarchy. It works the same, just on the hierarchy. Alt-Left click on the element in the hierarchy and the tiny menu pops out again. This way, I find my most used elements at a glance. Just make sure not to go overboard. If your whole hierarchy is a rainbow or all your folders are colored, you're back at the initial problem of having to search for stuff. Next up is always Odin Inspector. In the prototype, I usually write super crude code that barely does what I want it to. So right after cleaning up my project folders and hierarchy, my code needs a bit of love. Usually. I don't start with going super deep with it and create my own tools at this point. Instead, I'm just using some of its attributes to clean up my code. Attributes like the enum toggle buttons and button are things I wouldn't want to miss at this point anymore. It makes setting up inspectors so much easier. Alright, so much about core systems. 
Next up is everything for a good UI. My first prototypes usually don't have any UI to speak of, but an MVP usually needs one. Let's see what we can use to help with this task. I'll start with importing the Ultimate Clean Graphical User Interface Pack. You might have already seen my video about it here, so I'll summarize. With Graphical User Interface Packs, you get pre-made UI elements to work with in your game. Good packs don't just come with images, but functionality as well. This one offers multiple themes, so I'll pick the science fiction looking one for this project. Minimum viable product is still not a complete game to me, just a hey look, this is what it could look and play like, so I am fine with keeping the default graphics for now. If I were to keep developing the game past the MVP stage, I'd simply swap out the graphics. Since our first buttons and UI elements are now in, this is a very good point to be thinking about localization. Working that into the project at a much later point would get super tedious fast and is my main reason for stopping to work on projects, to be honest. Luckily, over time, I got smarter about this. So let's grab i2 localization from the asset store. I tried a couple different ones, but this one is so easy to use, it basically feels like cheating. Let's import it, define our initial set of languages and set up the needed database for our project. This is all very well documented and initially only took me about half an hour to get started with. Everything you want to get translated needs a so-called key. I usually type those in all caps to not mix them up with static text like this. In the database, we'll add that key to the first column and the translation to the respective fields. The click of a button imports it back into Unity. You could also work with it inside of Unity, but in my experience, working outside exclusively fits much smoother into my workflows. Let's implement a button to quickly toggle through languages. Yeah, works as intended already. I have a rough and basic story in mind I want to tell, so I need a dialogue system. For this, the aptly named Dialogue System by Pixel Crushers is my default go-to asset. It offers so much more than just displaying a box with text and it works like a charm with another one of my all-time favorite assets, Text Animator. But one thing after the other. First, the Dialogue System comes with basic UIs you can use out of the box, but you can also create and design your own. I have something more colorful in mind than this drab gray one. Since I'm already here, I can use the next asset in line, the Modern Procedural UI Kit. It is a stellar asset to quickly generate different shapes or outlines for UI elements, and since I have a roundish text box in mind for this game, I create a circle, create an outline with a few clicks, and also give that outline a rainbow effect. It's easy to animate this as well. And with just a few clicks, the shape is set up as the text box. Back in the dialogue system, I write a super simple dialogue and can set up events I want to have at each entry. Here I want these demon-looking spiky things to pop up. For the typewriter effect, I am using Text Animator 2.0 by Fubuchi. It recently got a huge new version and I'm absolutely going to give it a spotlight in the next weeks. Setting up new effects like this typewriter or the wavy rainbow effect, which is actually two effects at once, is remarkably easy. And lastly, for everything UI, let's also add some sparkles and effects with UI particle image. If you've tried to add particles to UI with Unity's built-in system, you might have run into issues, but this works out of the box and offers a ton of features for this exact use case. It also has some really cool effects like this attractor feature, which lets you set up some particles and a target, and the particles will find their way to it. Adding the sparkles made me realize that all this while, this game still felt rather bare bones. Sure, good graphics are missing, but those will come in later anyway. Let's add my two last but not least favorite tools to the project. The first one is Feel by More Mountains. The game urgently needs some feedback and Feel is perfect for this. I want the top enemy HP bar to shake when our attack hits 
and also I'd like some screen shake to happen at that time as well. Plus, those blocks need to get some life put into them. A friend testing the game at that stage told me that it felt like playing at 5 FPS, and that's just no. <laughs> With the feel editor in the inspector, it's fun to mix and match and tinker and tweak values until the desired outcome is reached. We'll just have to hook it up in code to trigger it whenever we need it. And the last one for this build is a big one. Choreographer. It comes in two versions, so check their website to know what's included in each. I have both, but we'll use the smaller one for this project for now. With Choreographer, you can sync whatever your heart desires to the music of your game. You just have to draw in which beats you want events to fire on and subscribe to these events in code. For example, I want my blocks to move on each beat and those particles in my pause menu should also be spawned on it. Before Choreographer, I had used a bunch of timers, but something was always out of sync. With Choreographer though, it's super easy to have everything synced up correctly. Plus, this and Odin Inspector are the only two assets that needed any kind of tweaks in my scripts. With Odin I could get as detailed as I wanted, with Choreographer most of what I want is accessible with only a few lines of code. So, and all in all, this is what Witches of the Flow looks like currently. Well, it's been about five days from technical prototype to design prototype, a bit of a week in total. Sure, there are still bugs, it's called prototype for a reason, but I can say that whenever I open this project up now, I actually get excited about it and thanks to it finally looking, albeit roughly, how I want the final product to look like. Witches of the Flow has been a passion project I had wanted to tackle for a long time now and thanks to Unity, I could finally justify spending time on it. And you can give it a try too, just head over to itch.io and download it. You'll find the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this overview. Do you have favorite assets you wouldn't want to miss anymore? Let me know, I'm always looking for new tools to give a try. If you liked the video, please like it and subscribe. You'd make my day. Have a great week!